In this video, I'm going to show you the wood bleaching process I used on my client's antique mahogany sideboard to go from this to this. And yes, you heard that right, mahogany. I'm Ashley from Blue Wren Interiors. I've been a furniture refinisher for over eight years, and I am here to help you with your furniture flipping adventures. Okay, so first of all, it's important to note that I had to strip my client's sideboard down to bare wood. This is such an important step because wood bleach cannot remove finish or stain. We have to do that process first to get the best results possible out of the wood bleaching treatment. So here I've used a chemical paint stripper to remove most, if not all, of the finish and stain. And then sanded with my orbital on the flat areas and hand sanding to the rest. The chemical stripper does most of the work for me, so sanding is much easier and less labour intensive. If you want to see more on furniture stripping, check out my other videos. Here is a quick look at how I hand sand those detailed areas. I'll use these sanding grips for profiled edging and sanding sponges are great for folding and contouring to details and carvings. After I have made sure all of that finish and stain has been removed, I have cleaned down my piece from the sanding dust, I can now move on to the wood bleaching process. I used a kit called Lighten It, which is non-toxic. However, other brands of two-part wood bleachers will give you similar results. Links to bleach kits are below in the description. Whichever kit you use, be sure to follow the instructions. The wood bleaching process was actually really easy and way less scary than it sounds. To start with, I mixed the A and B parts together in this trigger bottle as per the instructions. P.S. Don't leave the product in the bottle unless you want it to potentially boil over and blow up. Well, not exactly blow up, but the chemical reaction causes it to heat up so the oxygen that it creates needs to escape somewhere. So you'll spray it on in sections and work it in with a brush for an even application. Spray it on liberally so it soaks the wood evenly and keep working it in with the brush before moving on to the next section. At this point, I notice my brush already stained with brown tannins. So try to mix up small amounts at a time so you don't have much left over to discard. To start with, I mixed up about half a cup of each, but in total I used about one cup of each, the A and B solution for this sideboard. You can't use too much of the mix, but you can use too little. You can see it frothing up like this. I kept brushing it in until it was all soaked in. I went over the piece twice with the bleach. This will actually help you to make sure it has been applied evenly, so you don't end up with possible blotchy and uneven areas. Then you will leave it for a number of hours according to the instructions. I left mine overnight because it was the end of the day. Here's what it looked like the next day and here's the raw wood again for reference. It looks quite yellow but a crazy difference from the red mahogany it was. You can also do an, another round of bleaching if you think you need to. Inside the cabinet doors really benefited from an extra round of bleach as they were much more red than exterior due to always being in darkness and not getting any natural light. Now depending on the brand of wood bleach you use, the instructions will tell you what to wash it off with. Some will use vinegar and water, but the Lighten It kit came with its own wood cleaning crystals to mix up with warm water. The AB wood bleach solution isn't toxic as it only creates an oxygen chemical reaction, so the smell wasn't offensive, but these wood cleaning crystals had quite potent fumes, just as an FYI. Make sure you definitely have your mask on with fitted vapor filters and plenty of ventilations if you use this. I like to have a fan going as well. So you'll spray on this wood cleaning solution all over the piece and then wash it off with buckets of water and microfiber cloths. I quickly realized I needed a bigger bucket I ended up using about three 15 litre buckets and rinsing and wiping down with the microfiber cloths before I called it done. Oh. 
It's important to note that not all bleaches are made from the same products. Household bleach isn't ideal for wood and it's said that it changes the pH of the wood. It's best left for getting stains out of material and killing bacteria. It can possibly remove a stain from wood, but it can't alter the wood's natural colour. Oxalic acid is great for removing spot stains, but not an efficient overall bleach treatment. If your goal is to alter the natural wood colour to a lighter tone, then two-part wood bleach is what you need. The wood bleach works by drawing the colour up to the surface of the wood and out. And here you can see the colour literally dripping off the piece onto the floor. It was amazing to see. At this point, don't freak out. The wood gets darker at this stage and it is totally normal. It is most important to wait until the whole process is finished before seeing the true results. Once it has dried off again, here is what it looked like. Speechless, right? It has completely changed and almost looks like an entirely different piece. It has gone from a dull cherry red to this lighter, brighter French country look in my opinion. I can see more clearly the characteristics of the grain and it has a beautiful, unique look. I found that I could also do a gentle hand sand all over and some of the tannins that were still sitting on the surface that weren't washed away could be sanded away. But don't sand too hard though because you will find the untreated wood below and particularly on the corners and edges. After bleaching, you basically have a blank canvas for whatever finish you want. But I will show you what I did. So at this point now with the water test, the wood was still showing some orange tones. And knowing my client wasn't after that, I applied a simple paint wash to correct it before applying my top coat. A paint wash or pickling as you might know it is an almost translucent paint to water mix that creates a barrier between these orange tones and your top coat. I'll tag a video below for paint washing. So after the paint wash application and a quick light hand sand, I was able to seal the whole piece with a water-based polyurethane. I chose a matte sheen so it looked more aged and authentic in my opinion, like a waxed French country piece. So again, here is where we started and where we finished. The final result blew me away. Let me know what you think in the comments and check out more important details in the description. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.